This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. Let's get to our next guest here on this edition of the Stuff File program, shall we? And before we actually hear from the guest, let's hear some of the music from the guest. What you just heard was a snippet of a new single that is released by Nzandi. It's called Freak. And speaking of freaks, this is a man who is so freaking talented. In addition to being a musician, he is also an actor. Plus, he is the Bram Stoker award-winning author of Owari Mosaic, a story that is set on an alternate Earth. Nzandi joins us via Skype from Los Angeles. Hello, sir. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. What's up? Thanks for being on the program with us. Again, multi-talented. Is there anything you can't do? Ah, uh, you know, I can't do one-arm push-ups anymore because I pulled my deltoid muscle. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you could at one time do one-arm push-ups just basically tells me exactly what I said in, in the opening. You can do everything. Oh, man, I appreciate it. You know how life is, man. It really doesn't feel that way. It's just been a long journey of, you know, just trying to master one thing at a time, if you know what I mean. A long journey of it. Okay, so... so here I am now at, at 57 now with uh, a few things under my belt. Okay. Now, we just played a little bit of, of your song called Freak. Tell us about your music career. First of all, which one is more important to you, if any... Your music career, your writing career, or your acting career? The best way I can put this is as a metaphor. All right, so you have that hot girlfriend that you used to go out with. You know, she's a 10, spiritually, physically, emotionally, body a 10, you know, but for some reason or another, it didn't work out. But every time you see her, you want to, you know, take her out until you take her out and you realize, oh, this is why we broke up. That is music for me <laughs> <laughs> that is music so writing is that long time you know you, you you're engaged you uh, married her you know that long time partner that you've been with for years and years she treats you good you treat her good you know her she knows you you get a lot of response from her you know you're living a really good life and you know everything's good that would be the writing and the acting would probably be like, you know, when, you, when you're five years old and you say you want to be an actor, you want to be like Bruce Lee. Um, but you don't really put a lot of time behind it. You don't put a lot of schooling, education, or expertise behind it. You know, it's just something you love to do. That would be the acting. So if I don't know if that kind of put it in perspective for you. I think that uh, made it crystal clear. <laughs> so let's talk about that long-standing relationship with the woman that you love, let's talk about your book, yeah. uh, Owari Mosaic. Uh, as I said, it is set in an alternate earth. Tell us about the book and where the idea for that story came from. Well, I did, you know, like a lot of ideas, it kind of snowballs and they start from one thing and then lead to another. It actually started off as a story about breast cancer and then it just ended up something completely different. Well, once I started writing, once I wrote the uh, first kind of draft and it didn't work out for me. It's about, you know, I always wanted to do, I, I love this story called, I love Quincy Medical Examiner, the TV show with Jack Klugman. That was one of my favorites. 
And back then when I used to watch that as a teenager, I used to say to myself, I want to be the black Jack Klugman, you know, so I didn't kind of work out. But what I did was make this young black teenage girl a medical examiner of the future. Everything that she learned, she learned it through the metaverse. And I actually call it the neuroverse because it's not really online. Everything is in her brain. So, you know, everything they they, they make phone calls through the, with their mind. They can go to school with their mind. And so she learns through a game that teaches or that uses real cold cases, but teaches forensics. She learns how to be a forensic examiner through the game. So basically the story is, you know, as a teenager, she's hanging out partying and she, you know, had a little buzz and she runs over something and she doesn't know what it is in her brother's car. She looks out to investigate and it's it's the body of a young girl. So she thinks she killed a, a young girl and she calls her brother who happens to be a cop and he covers it up. And so it's a journey of her finding out whether or not she really killed this girl and um, what's behind the strange virus that is affecting people is a, a, a culmination of those two things. Wow. And it also wow. is a, an alternative world where I don't really talk about vampires, but it's, she's an inhuman, which is similar to a vampire, which means she needs synthetic blood to survive and to, you know, to live. Wow. I, 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 I'm almost afraid to ask where this story comes from. What, what recess in your mind <laughs> created this kind of story was this type of story was the 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 other world the alternative earth uh the fantasy world was this something that interested you as a reader yourself yes you know i'm a big horror love lover and i'm a big sci-fi uh i can't say geek because i'm not like you know if you start spitting out what's this and what's that i wouldn't know all of that but i just love sci-fi and horror and I used to play Resident Evil, that game. And I was a big game. I used to finish it in two hours. I got to that point. So it's kind of like a combination of everything that I used to love, you know, sci-fi wise, all those type of shows like Carbon. What's it? Carbon? Carbon? Uh, I can't even think of the name of the TV show. But, uh, you know, that show and Star Trek and Star Wars, just everything that I love and vampires and Blade and martial arts. It's kind of like all of that stuff. And over the years, I've developed this world and all of my characters. Characters now, you know, I'm on my fourth book, but all the characters live in this type of world, these alternative worlds. The thing that uh, I mentioned is you're also an actor. So do you envision yourself within the story? And if it ever came to television or film, would you want to play a role in a character that you created? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. What I would love, <laughs> what I would love is to to be able to sit in Video Village, Video Village is like the little area where the director and the writers sit and they watch the, the production of a, of a TV series or a film. I would love to be that guy in Video Village quietly as one of the executive producers kind of, uh, you know, watching watching it all come to, to life. But other than that, yeah, no, 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 no. I would never want to be, well, I won't say never say never, but I wouldn't want to be in front of the camera, but behind the camera. That would be cool. As a writer, and, and again, since you say this is your first love and your longest love, how did it feel to win the, the Bram Stoker Award? It was surreal, man. I, first of all, I didn't think I could get nominated. Um, and then I got nominated. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then it was during COVID. So we didn't have, you know, you had to, you had to film, you know, your, your acceptance speeches. So that was weird because, you, you know, do I feel excited? I don't know if I want, you know, so that was kind of weird. And then I won and, uh, on, you know, online and I was like, oh my God, you know, what's going on? And it took about two years for me to find out that I was the first black to win it in a YA category. So that just took it to a whole nother level of just like, I'm, you know, I'm really grateful and just, I will never, ever stop giving props to the hard. Writers Association and StokerCon for bestowing that uh, distinction upon me. It, it was amazing. Excellent. It still is. Well, congratulations on all the success yeah. that you've had. Now, uh, we have just about a minute to go, and uh, we did play a little bit of the song called Freak, so I, I, I need a little explanation as to your process in putting music together and, and how that works out for you. I have no idea, man. You know, I have a, a producer. He's a pretty cool hip-hop producer over the years. He sends me a lot of tracks. I don't know, man. Just ideas come and I play around with different things and something works, something doesn't work. That song, that particular song, I just wanted to do a song that kind of had like a horror spin to it. And it really is 
kind of a little bit based on my life. You know, I've always never fit in, you know, except for writing. You know, I was a teacher, never really fit in, you know, and just different little areas of that I've done in my life. And this is kind of like that, but it's it's kind of like a song that just in one way cheers on that person who was always different, who was called a freak. But in another way, shows you how dangerous it can be. Kind of like the Joker. Like the Joker. You know, if he's the Joker. You know, like he's... You, you empathize with someone because you know he has a lot of problems and people pick on him and push him around. But watch what happens when you push him around. So that's kind of what that song is. Well, you are definitely a triple threat, even though you usually say writing is your first love. Uh, you are definitely a triple threat. Uh, your music is great. Uh, congratulations on all that you've done. And thank you so much for taking the time to be on the program with us. Anthony, Peter Anthony, thank you so much, a.k.a. Batman, a.k.a. you know superhero of the day. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. <laughs> you see, now, no one's going to remember what you, what, what you just said or why you said it. You actually called me and you got my outgoing message, which not a lot of people get a chance to hear. So that's what you're referring to. But I, I thank you for it, sir. No problem. Thanks for having me. It's, it's uh, cool. And, uh, you know, have a, a wonderful week. Appreciate you. He's an author, a musician, and an actor. He's in Zondi. His book is called Owari Mosaic. You can go to my website at thestuffall.com, check out the show number for this program, which is show number 0745, and you'll find links to Nzondi's site, plus links to either Amazon.com or Amazon.ca, where you can order his book directly. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.